right friends welcome back to lecture session of uh, 32nd week this week is from 3rd august to 9th august and before going into the details of the highlights of the week uh, i would like to clarify two points before going into the lecture first and the foremost is uh, several students are asking about the pdf formats of uh, these ppts so i would like to inform you that the ppts in pdf format you can access at www.learningspace.in www.learningspace.in on the top left hand corner you will have a link to this pdf format of ppts from week number 1 to 30 that means for all the 30 weeks lectures will be available so the format whatever we have followed from the beginning all you can access especially the current affairs whatever we have recorded from week number 1 of 2015 to week number 30 of 2015 you can access the ppts in pdf format and you have to log on to www.learningspace.in the second point i would like to clarify is some students are asking how do i come to know with regard to the uploading of various lectures this learning space has got a youtube channel from where you are accessing these videos and if you go to the youtube channel of learning space right hand side corner you will see this subscribe button and through that you can become subscriber to this channel and subsequently whatever the videos we upload you will get intimation from youtube right so please become subscriber for the youtube channel of learning space and these two things i have clarified today with regard to the pdf format of current affairs ppts second is with regard to becoming the subscriber to the youtube channel right i hope you understood these two points and let us move on to the important events of the week first and foremost is government signed peace accord with nscn im naga peace accord was signed with the, the major faction of uh, nscn national socialist council of nagalim im faction and second important aspect is the national handloom day inaugurated by the prime minister in chennai first national handloom day inaugurated at chennai center bans 857 adult content websites or popularly called pornographic websites and subsequently retracted its decision in view of the social media outrage and subsequently restricted to child porn sites when it comes to the events around the world it is a clean power plan by president barack obama after the affordable care act it is a clean power plan by barack obama expanded ambitious uh, suez canal was uh, inaugurated in egypt debris of mh370 were found near reunion island reunion island is in the indian ocean belongs to france close to africa religious intolerance at its extreme in bangladesh fourth blogger was killed recently North Korea sets the clocks back by 30 minutes from August 15. It is going to set at GMT plus eight and a half hours. At present, it is GMT plus nine hours. Political parties finally agreed for the constitution in Nepal. A long pending issue was solved. When it comes to the economy events, the first 4G services were launched by Airtel four to five months before the launch of. Uh, Reliance Jio when it comes to miscellaneous events success of clinical trials of Ebola vaccine good news to Africa atomic bomb attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan completed 70 years several people lost their lives 
in the closing moments of second world war in the year 1945 right these are the important events let us look at one by one government signed a peace accord with nscn nscn is a national socialist council of nagalim some papers quoted it as nationalist socialist council of nagaland but from the official authentic website it is written as national socialist council of nagalim and the faction is isaac muiva these two leaders were also present this agreement was signed with uh, the presence of these two leaders in the presence of the prime minister and government stated that uh, it uh, drawn the curtains down on the nagaland issue but several questions remained unanswered first and the foremost thing is not much is revealed out of the agreement government kept it as a secret thing second important aspect is though this is the major faction representing nagas but there are several other factions one important faction is kaplang faction kaplang faction is based its activities in the adjoining myanmar it is operating from myanmar that faction was not taken into consideration was not taken on board the other important aspect is three adjacent states were not consulted this uh, nagaland issue or uh, the greater nagalim what the organizations uh, claim this uh, pertains to four states though predominantly nagas are staying in nagaland but a substantial portion are staying in arunachal pradesh as well as manipur and a small portion in assam so three states were not consulted and there is a demand for several years with regard to the separate nagalim state and as per the initial demand of nscn there is a sovereignty clause they want a sovereign nagaland state and this issue is also not clear up to what extent the government has conceded the demand of nscn so these are all the critical issues which are not answered in the nagaland accord but overall it's a good sign to have peace in the northeast region and we are going to discuss in news analysis with regard to various pros and cons of this nagaland accord but overall it's a right step in the right direction in spite of its pitfalls and unanswered questions right friends look into the next one first national handloom day inaugurated by the prime minister in chennai the first national handloom day was celebrated on 7th august this 7th august was chosen so as to commemorate the day on which swadeshi movement was started swadeshi movement was started on 7th august 1905 so as to commemorate that day this august 7 is declared as the national handloom day and this was inaugurated in chennai by the prime minister and as per the statistics given out of total consumption of the cloth 15% is contributed by handlooms 15% of the cloth is contributed by handlooms the prime minister gave a call to increase it to 20% so that livelihoods to weavers will be created so as to improve the livelihoods or create livelihoods for weavers the prime minister gave a call to increase the consumption of hand woven cloth or hand looms from 15% to 20% right this is one aspect and he also gave away sant kabir awards and he also launched the india handloom brand at chennai 
right friends look into the next event this is central government banned 857 adult content websites and later on restricted to child porn sites i would like to tell the history little bit of history initially kamlesh vaswani an advocate from indore in madhya pradesh kamlesh vaswani an advocate from indore in madhya pradesh filed a public interest litigation petition in the supreme court and the supreme court subsequently asked the center what steps are being taken within 4 weeks especially with regard to child pornography and one fine morning the central government banned 857 adult content websites after supreme court asked the center what steps you are taking with regard to the pornographic sites center suddenly banned 857 adult content websites or popularly known as pornographic sites and the issue pertaining to this i would like to explain a little bit first and the foremost is there was lot of hue and cry in the social media social media says it is against the fundamental right given under article 21 of the constitution that is the personal liberty what the rule says rule is very clear section 292 of indian penal code says distribution of obscene material is crime similarly article 67 of information technology act says production distribution of obscene material in electronic form is crime and there are several other laws protection of children from sexual offences act this also makes using children in pornographic acts punishable so this is the provision as per as law is concerned but why is it difficult to implement it is difficult to implement because of several reasons the first and the foremost is the website content is mostly based on the servers based abroad the websites are on servers based abroad that is first thing second important point is if a url is banned the content can open another website within few minutes if any url is banned the person can open another website within few minutes the third important point is if they are banned also viewers can still access by creating virtual private network popularly known as vpn by creating virtual private network viewers can still access these sites and the gray areas no law says viewing pornographic content is a crime but producing distributing pornographic material is crime second important point is no clear differentiation between obscenity between pornography between vulgarity there is no clear demarcation between these three so that's why these are the gray areas and finally government retracted back after lot of hue and cry in social media and the things stand today this child pornographic sites are banned as per the government instructions and in future government is contemplating to start a regulator or ombudsman in this regard right friends this is about uh, this and let us look at the issues around the world after the affordable care act president barack obama is remembered for affordable care act now another magnanimous decision taken by president obama that is clean power plan obama took a decision with regard to clean power plan and he is the first president to take such an important decision as far as climate change is concerned second important point is this global climate change conference or global climate change summit is going to be held in paris from november 30 onwards and usa president took a decision by unveiling clean power plan i would like to tell you two three points as per the clean power plan all the power plants 
have to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions by 32% from 2005 levels by 2030 from 2005 levels all the power plants have to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions by 32% by 2030 second important point is they have to put forth their plans by 2018 and start implementing them by 2022 so these are the important aspects of this clean power plan and us president took the lead in announcing this but there are uh, critics who say that why you are penalizing only power sector and basically coal producing states are up in arms in united states of america why the coal based plants are only targeted there are carbon dioxide emissions from other sources also why this is the sector which is targeted and whatever the critics say ultimately it will give push to not only wind energy but also solar energy in future right friends like look into the next one expanded suez canal inaugurated all of you are well aware suez canal was inaugurated in the year 1869 it connects mediterranean sea with the red sea important link important trade route between europe and asia and it was inaugurated in the year 1869 and subsequently it was nationalized in 1950s much against the wishes of western powers and now it is expanded bypasses were built at several places it was deepened at several places and now the expansion costed around 8 billion dollars 8 billion dollars it costed and some people say it is around 9 billion dollars and what are the advantages of it by the year 2000 23 the government says the government of egypt says by the year 2023 the revenue will go up to 13.2 billion dollars from the figures of 5 billion dollars in 2013 from 5 billion dollars in 2013 the revenue will go up to 13.2 billion dollars the second important aspect is the number of ships passing through this channel will go up to 97 by 2023 so these two points and ambitiously it expanded the suez canal please don't forget suez canal passes uh, through isthmus of uh, this uh, suez it connects the mediterranean sea with red sea right look into the next one debris of mh370 were found near reunion island this uh, reunion island you may ask where is the reunion island this the reunion island is close to africa or you can say close to madagascar please look into this map and debris was seen here but the flight was going from kuala lumpur to beijing this is not in this route the flight was going from kuala lumpur in malaysia to beijing in china and the debris is found almost in the opposite direction and the flight was going from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on 8th March with the 227 passengers on board and subsequently went missing and the debris was found near the reunion island and several questions remained unanswered the questions are what caused the plane to divert any cockpit crew are involved is it any terror attack or hijack why the tracking systems were switched off as it a case of suicide by pilot or was it attacked by any military of any country so these are the questions very difficult to answer but please don't forget the debris of the flight were found near the beach of this reunion island reunion island is in indian ocean and it belongs to france please don't forget when you look at the next world event it is religious intolerance at its extreme in bangladesh unfortunate events are taking place the persons who ever are propagating secular beliefs or free speech are being killed one after the other please look into this when you go back to 27th february it was avijit roy 
blogger of Muktomona. He was killed in Dhaka. And subsequently on 30th March, Rahman Babu was killed in Dhaka. In the month of May, Ananta Bijay Das was killed in Silhet. And recently, Nilay Chatterjee, a blogger was killed. And this occurred in the city of Dhaka. And recently, the attacks on bloggers are taking place. And these bloggers are the propagators of freedom of expression or you can say secular bloggers. They are being killed in Bangladesh. It raised several questions about religious fundamentalism in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is ruled by Sheikh Hasina of Awami League. And in recent times, they started the trial of the war crimes. They started the trial of the war crimes in the Bangladesh Liberation War that took up in the year 1971. In the year 1971, some people worked against Bangladesh Liberation, especially Jamaiti Islami. Recently, Jamaiti Islami leader was sentenced to 90 years of imprisonment and several Jamaiti Islami leaders are also now sentenced to imprisonment and the opposition BNP supported Jamaiti Islami and the killing of these bloggers one after the other assumed significance because in recent times the trial of the war crimes in the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War sentenced several persons especially Jamaiti Islami leaders into imprisonment for several years right friends so this is uh, the biggest issue now facing Bangladesh and look at the next. North Korea sets the clocks back by 30 minutes from August 15. North Korea, whatever is going on inside, outside world does not know much. If you look at the North Korea citizens, how their life is, let us look at these events. Internet is not allowed. They have got their own net. Citizens must abide by 28 approved haircuts. You should not have your own haircut. Unmarried women must have short hair. Only music that glorifies the country is allowed. All the music, whatever we are listening, is not allowed in North Korea. Only military and government officials are allowed to own the vehicles. So these are the features of North Korea. And under these circumstances, North Korea now decided to put its clock back by 30 minutes. At present, the time is GMT plus 9 hours. The time zone of North Korea, South Korea, Japan is one and the same. That is GMT plus 9 hours. Now, North Korea is putting it back by 30 minutes. North Korea from August 15th onwards, will have GMT plus 8 and a half hours. Why August 15? Because August 15 was the date that 70th anniversary of defeat of Japan in the world war. Why this is linked to defeat of Japan? This is linked to defeat of Japan because Japan ruled Korea from 1910 to 1945. Japan ruled Korea from 1910 to 1945 and finally Japan was defeated in the Second World War on August 15, 1945 and from August 15 this year Pyongyang time or you can say North Korea time will be GMT plus 8 and a half hours but South Korea and Japan will continue to be GMT plus 9 hours. Somehow it shows some sort of animosity with Japan also because Japan ruled Korea and several excesses or Koreans were treated as slaves in those days and as a vengeance, as animosity with Japan, Supreme Leader of North Korea took this decision to put the clocks back by 30 minutes so as to have its own time of GMT plus 8 and a half hours. Right? Do you know who is the Supreme Leader of uh, North Korea, Kim Jong-un is the Supreme Leader of uh, North Korea and nothing much is known about uh, the affairs of the country to the outside world. Right friends, look into the next one. 
political parties finally agree over new constitution in Nepal. For the past several years, they are unable to come to the conclusion with regard to the new constitution in Nepal. Finally, they decided to have their own constitution and the framework was decided. Four parties signed it. Nepali Congress, the Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Marxist-Leninist and Unified Communist Party of Nepal and Madhesi People's Rights Forum Democratic. These four parties signed it and I would like to explain the important features. Previously, there was problem with regard to the number of provinces. Several people are demanding provinces and finally, the constitution agreed upon six provinces. Nepal will have six provinces and the contentious issue with regard to the number of provinces was solved. That is the first breakthrough. Second important point is each province will send eight members to the upper house. There will be six provinces, each province will send eight members to the upper house. Out of eight members, three will be women, one will be Dalit and one will be either different abled or from minority community. And three members will be nominated by the president to the upper house. So, upper house will have 51 members altogether. Finally, the constitution framework was finalized by Nepal, which became contentious for the past several years. Looking to the economic events, Airtel launched 4G services just 4 months before the launch of Reliance Geo. Reliance Geo is coming up with 4G services in the month of December 2015. We learned last week 4G will be based on long term evolution or LTE technology and Airtel launched this service in 296 towns across the country. And Airtel became the first telecom company to launch 4G services in the country. And the biggest feature of this 4G service is it gives high speed mobile broadband connectivity. High speed mobile broadband is the feature of 4G and its speeds will be 10 times more than 3G. Its speeds will be 10 times more than 3G and the other details I have given in this PPT, please go through them. Right friends, look into the next most important issue, success of clinical trials of Ebola vaccine, moment of jubilation in Africa. Ebola vaccine, clinical trials are going on and there is a moment of jubilation. These clinical trials are being conducted in West African country Guinea, one of the worst affected along with Liberia and Sierra Leone. And I would like to tell you little bit of history about Ebola. Ebola was first surfaced in the year 1976 in two countries, South Sudan the second country is the Democratic Republic of Congo. In those days, it was called Jair. Democratic Republic of Congo, in those days, it was known as Jair. In these two countries, it was surfaced in the year 1976. Quite often, on it is appearing and almost a year ago, or you can say during the closing months of 2013, it reappeared again in three countries, Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia, it claimed several lives. As per the World Health Organization statistics, during the past one and a half year, 27,748 cases were detected, which resulted in more than 11,000 deaths. Out of more than 11,000 deaths, maximum contribution is from Liberia. These three countries are West African countries, Liberia, Guinea and Sierra Leone. This Ebola is the name of the river. 
what will happen when the ebola virus is inside the body there will be fever sore in throat muscle pains these are the initial symptoms subsequently diarrhea and vomiting will be there loss of body fluids will take place because of which people may die because of low blood pressure so these are the symptoms of ebola and finally a vaccine was manufactured by public health agency of canada by the public health agency of canada a vaccine was manufactured the name of the vaccine is or vsv jabo and clinical trials were held in guinea guinea is the west african country which was one of the worst affected and so far it has shown 100% efficacy after 10 days of vaccination and these clinical trials are being done with the methodology of ring vaccination you may ask what is ring vaccination if an affected person is there all the persons around that affected person will be vaccinated let us assume some x has got ebola virus he was affected with ebola virus whoever are coming nearer to that affected person whoever are coming close to that affected person may be relatives may be neighbors may be paramedical personnel vaccination will be done to them that is called ring vaccination through ring vaccination similar process was adopted for containing smallpox in 1970s now also clinical trials are being conducted through the process of ring vaccination so far the clinical trials are successful who claims that in the initial clinical trials almost 100% efficacy was attained after 10 days of vaccination let us hope some breakthrough within the shortest possible time and the ebola virus is spread through the direct contact of body fluids of an infected person and at the same time through cadaver cadaver is the dead body please don't forget cadaver is the dead body which is given to the hospitals for research purpose let us hope for the good news of making available vaccine as early as possible look into the last issue of the week atomic bomb attack on hiroshima and nagasaki completed 70 years on august 6 during the closing moments of second world war on august 6 an atomic bomb was dropped on hiroshima hiroshima is the port city of japan an atomic bomb was dropped the name of the bomb was a little boy around 90000 to 146000 people lost their lives and 3 days later on august 9 another bomb was dropped the name was a fat man and subsequently around 40000 to 80000 people lost their lives and finally japan surrendered on 15th august 1945 almost resulted in the end of second world war and recently 70th anniversary or you can say 70 years completed after the event of atomic bomb probably that was the first that was the last and let us hope not to recur such instances anywhere across the world in future let us hope the mankind to stay with peace and calm and with this let us conclude 32nd week lecture and please to join for news analysis and features have a nice day thank you